Hello and welcome to Bible Enlightenment Truths by Ambrose King. We're going to look at the reason why you should reject the spirit of fear. Fear is a torture. Fear will stop the power of God from working in you because fear is an emotion that causes harm to the body and fear is an emotion that allows the devil to torment you or allow evil spirits to hurt you. You know, when you want to receive from God, you have to operate by faith alone. Anything outside of faith cannot get anything from God. Fear is of the devil and you learn to reject fear. You should learn to refuse to be afraid. Even when you feel that fear in you or around you, you should not voice it out that you are afraid. Have you ever heard some people always saying they are afraid? They are afraid. Or, uh, you know, they, they say their fear is so, so, and so. Well, as a Christian, as a believer, fear will always work against you. It will always stop faith from operating. You cannot have fear and faith at the same time. So you learn to always verbalize and say, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear, no matter the circumstance. You see, there's an evil spirit that is responsible for fear. So every time you keep saying you're afraid, you're afraid, or you say your fear is so, so, and so, then what you're doing is you are enabling the evil spirit to hurt you. I know it's very popular when people keep using the word fear. They are scared. They are afraid. But when we look at the Bible, uh, believers are not supposed to voice it out that they are afraid. You might be experiencing fear, but that doesn't mean you allow fear to torture you because fear will always bring bad results. So journey with me as we examine the scriptures together. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. I will be reading the Amplified Bible. It says, do not fear anything for I am with you. That's God speaking. He said, do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. I love that. The first statement is, it says, do not fear. So every time you are afraid, you verbalize it. We keep saying you are afraid, you are scared, or what is scaring you is this and that. So you are actually sinning. It's a sin to go against the command of God. He said, do not fear. He now said, do not fear anything. Ooh, I like that, anything. He now said, for I am with you. So when you are afraid, God departs from you. When you vaporize fear, when you keep telling people you are afraid, you are scared. No matter the circumstances, say anything. Anytime you verbalize the fact that you are afraid, you might experience fear, but when you keep saying you are afraid, you are scared, you are afraid, you are afraid. What happened is you are short circuiting the power of God from flowing in your direction because you say, I am with you. So if you keep telling people you are afraid, that means, that means you are telling God that God is not enough for you. Looking at this verse again, it says, Do not be afraid, for I am your God. Oh, glory to God. So when you have God with you, when you are born again the right way, the Bible way, God lives inside of you. So each time you verbalize the fact that you are afraid, you are pushing the power of God away from walking in your direction let's look at what it says say, so what you need to do is refuse to fear anything you say anything refuse to fear and the only way you can refuse to fear is by first saying it by verbalizing it and say i refuse to fear i refuse to be afraid i refuse to be scared that is the first way to fight fear see god is with you here he didn't say he's going to be with you he said he is with you it's a present hour reality he said he is with you so when you, when you begin to tell people you are afraid, you are going against the command of God and that sin. You know, so when you give in to fear by keep telling people you are afraid, you are giving to sin, uh, to the sin of, of disobeying God. See, God is bigger than any enemy or circumstances that could come against you. That's why I say, do not be afraid. I am with you. Because God is bigger than anyone, any enemy, any circumstance that could come against you. You have to be conscious of that. Glory to God. So you have to believe that he is your God, the almighty God, the creator of the universe. He's bigger, he's greater than any circumstances. He's greater than any demon. He's greater than any power, or any force, or any situation, or any circumstance that could try to hold you back. That's why, do, that's why he said, do not be afraid. I am with you. So when you keep saying you're afraid, you're scared, you're stopping the power of God from working in your, on your behalf. 
So learn to refuse to fear. To fear. Learn to refuse to, to fear by keep saying you refuse to fear. So you have to depend on God's strength. Look at this. This is a beautiful verse for especially those of you who are always afraid, things are always scaring you. You know, so you have to believe without any doubt that God is with you. It doesn't matter what you have done, your bad, your mistake, your, even if you have done something wrong. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You have to be conscious of that. You see, God is your helper. He help, he said he will help you. See, he said he will certainly take hold of you. He said he will certainly take hold of you. Glory to God. He said, I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand. So that means he will, no matter the fear. Wow, I like that. Say, it's a hand of justice, it's a hand of power and righteousness. It's a hand of victory and salvation. So you cannot fail, you cannot lose when God is on your side. That's why I love what David says in, in Psalm 23. He said, though I walk the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. No, no evil. That should be your mindset. Glory to God. So you have to meditate on this word day and night with boldness. And boldness will rise up in you. Fear is torture. Fear is a spirit. Fear is an evil spirit. The first approach is to make it to sense its presence. So the only way you can fight that spirit of fear is to say it out with your mouth. I refuse to fear. I will not fear. Once you verbalize it, the power of God will be activated in you. Let's take it um, one step further. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I love this. God has not. So where does fear come from? That means fear comes from the evil spirit. Fear comes from the devil. So you have to learn to reject fear the same way that you hate sin. Say fear is an evil spirit that must be resisted by the power of God's word. You have to resist it. Anytime you are afraid, maybe in the middle of the night you have a dream, a nightmare, instead of crying and tell people how scared you are, or you face a circumstance that looks so scary, and you keep saying with your mouth, you see, the thing is, the minute you keep saying you are scared or you are afraid, what you are doing, you are inviting that spirit of fear to come inside you feel, and you don't want that. So you have to say, I refuse to fear, because 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. He hath not. Glory to God. So fear stops the power of God from flowing in your direction, but faith keeps the power of God flowing on in and in you. Faith and fear, they cannot work together in you. You have to choose one. Because when you are praying by faith, the minute you activate fear, it neutralizes the power of faith. The choice is yours. Are you the one that always go around saying you are scared? Or every statement that you make, you say you are afraid, you are afraid? No. As a believer, a born-again child of God, you are supposed to reject fear when you sense fear. And the first way that you do that is by speaking against the spirit of fear, by saying, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. Then you tap into the power of God that is in you to help you overcome any circumstance that could come against you. I trust that this short video on Bible enlightenment truths has been a blessing to you. And if you are not born again, I invite you to come to Jesus today. Get born again the Bible way. And the Holy Spirit, who is bigger than the spirit of fear, will permanently abide and reside in and through you. And you can tap on the power of the Holy Spirit within you to overcome fear. I'll see you all again in another edition of Bible Enlightenment Truths. God bless you. Bye for now.